An example I want to give is the so-called wave equation. So the wave equation doesn't look like a system of equations in the beginning, but somehow it is. The wave equation is an equation involving a second order derivative in time. Okay, so if we have a first order derivative, it is the heat equation. It is a parabolic equation. It, it means the function is the function u is going to diffuse out after time. But if we have a second order derivative in time, the system, the equation behaves completely differently. To see that, let us use two auxiliary variables. Let's do phi and uh, uh, phi and psi. So let's introduce these two variables and uh, phi is defined as the derivative of u to t and psi is defined as the derivative of uh, u to x. So first of all, just by their definition, we know that partial psi partial t is equal to the partial square of u partial x partial t, right, just by definition of psi, which is actually equal to partial phi partial x, also by the definition of phi. So that's one equation we obtained through the definition. Okay, another equation we can obtain is from the equation. So the equation partial square u partial t square can be written as a time derivative of a time derivative, which is time derivative of phi. It is equal to uh, the time uh, the spatial derivative of u, which is spatial derivative of spatial derivative that is partial psi partial x. All right, so. We have these two equations, and we can write them down together. Partial psi partial t is partial phi partial x. Partial phi partial t is equal to partial psi partial x. What an interesting system. It corresponds to our previous example where this matrix, where this matrix, uh, u11, u12, u21, u22 is equal to what? 0, 0, because the psi time derivative does not depend on psi spatial derivative, and the phi time derivative doesn't depend on phi spatial derivative. They, on, they only have a coupling term, and it's minus 1, minus 1 here, right? Any questions about the derivation from the wave equation to the system of two equations we are solving here. <coughs> no? Okay. And what are the eigenvalues of that matrix? Of course, I don't expect you to do that mentally, but if you just uh, file MATLAB, it's minus 1 and 1. So, the eigenvalues of this matrix is minus 1 and 1. And uh, remember our stability analysis the lambda k1 would be then equal to our e to the j uh, k delta x minus e to the minus j k delta x divided by 2 delta x times 1. Lambda k2 would be equal to the same thing times minus 1. Right? And uh, if you write the exponential of complex of purely imaginary numbers into sines and cosines, you're going to find them to be purely imaginary numbers. They go like that all the way to 
uh, let me see, this is Wong minus Wong divided by delta x. They go all the way to Wong over delta x times, this is imaginary axis, this is real axis, and they go also, also all the way to minus Wong over delta x on the imaginary axis. So all the eigenvalues of both lambda k1, lambda k2 lies in that region. Okay. So we need something not forward order. We need a longer color scheme or something else so that we have a stability region that encompasses the imaginary axis.